Hello and welcome back to part six of this car modeling tutorial series from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and in this section we're going to go ahead and model the tire and the wheel. Now a couple of things that I would like to point out before we get started. First and foremost, as you'll have surely noticed already, is that we've switched to Blender 2.5 for this section. The reason being is that the technique that we're going to be using to create the wheel, namely the tire, is using a series of modifiers along with curves to basically replicate a single tread shape around the entire shape of the wheel. This way we don't have to go in and model every single tread or use the, the spin duplicates tool or anything like that, and instead we'll have a much more dynamic solution. However, the reason we've switched to 2.5 on this, because the same technique is possible in 2.49, is that it's much more reliable in 2.5, I've found. In previous versions, you a lot of times spent time fighting with twisting on the curve. And I think anyone that's messed with curves a lot will know what I'm referring to. And this same problem is still prevalent in 2.5 from time to time, but I've found it to be much more reliable than 2.49, as we've got a few more few more controls that allow us to fine-tune our settings. So, a couple other things that you'll notice is, number one, I've gone ahead and changed out the reference for this wheelbase, from, which is an image from iStock.com, which is an incredible uh, photo resource if you are needing some stock photos. Next thing I'd like to point out is that I'm also using a separate screen. And what I mean by that is if you go up here, you'll see that I've got them labeled as car and car wheel. And if we look at car, we have the original screen with these references already set up. And in this one, we have this one. Now, one other thing just to bring to your attention before going further is that you'll notice that I've only working in a single viewport now. And this is partially due to an excellent new feature that has been added in 2.5 that allows you to have multiple background images, each of them defined for their specific views. So if I bring up the toolbar here, or the properties panel by hitting N and go down to the backgrounds panel, you'll notice that I have these separate images which are then set to their designated views. Now, I'm not gonna go into the, in detail on this as that's a topic for another tutorial, but just do know that as you switch views, it automatically adjusts the background image to fit. So this is a very, very handy tool and we're gonna make use of it in this tutorial. So switching back over to the car wheel, let's get started. Since I don't, I don't need to worry about the car base for the time being, let's go ahead and just select it all, and we'll hit H to hide it. And now, with my cursor already positioned right about the center of the wheel, as you can see there from both views, from the front view, I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift A, add a cube, or actually in this case, a plane. And in edit mode, I'm then going to make sure everything's selected, which it should be by default and I'm going to rotate it along the x-axis 90 degrees such that it's flat and facing the viewer. And then I'm just going to scale it down right down to about the size of this center tread. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in a loop cut right down the center. As some of you were probably already guessing, I'm going to go ahead and add a mirror modifier. Although before I do that, let's go ahead and position our object a little more accurately, say right about there. And then we'll go ahead and hit Shift S and Cursor to Selected because we're going to want to maintain the same origin point. Going back into edit mode, let's go and add a loop cut by Control R, left click, and then immediately right click right down the center. We'll delete this other side by hitting B for box select, X to delete the vertices, and then we can go in and add a mirror modifier. Okay, and if we go ahead and turn on do clipping and enable it while in edit mode, and enable the cage, we can see our exact results. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and select this edge, and let's extrude it along the edges only, along the x-axis, right out to this edge. Okay, and now from the side view, which we can switch by hitting 3, let's go ahead and select everything, and we're going to hit G and Y to lock it to the y-axis and pull it right out to the edge of the tire. Because now we're going to go ahead and extrude this, edges only again, along the x-axis, right out to the edge, and then from the side view, we're going to pull it back to this ridge here, actually right about there. And then we'll extrude it in one more time. And then let's go ahead and extrude it in. And from the front view, we'll pull it in to about where it should be long, probably right about there. And then we can take it in one more time. <coughs> Excuse me. So at this point, now I want to just kind of smooth things out. So I'm just going to add in another loop cut here, right click, and then hit G. And you'll notice that I have my snapping on, which I don't want. So I'm going to hit uh, Shift-Tab to turn that off. 
and then G and Y. And if I hold down Shift, I can make it a very smooth movement, like so. Okay, so that gives us that curve for the tire there. And since we're going to be adding a subsurf modifier to this, let's go ahead and, uh, well, no, we're going to go ahead and actually just leave it as is. Okay, so at this point, what I want to do is go in and add some of the tread details. Now, do keep in mind that this section and these things are going to be two different objects. The reason being is that we can, it'll be much easier to create this as a separate object than to add it in here. Because we're basically, what we're basically making is a single tread that we will then be able to replicate around the entire wheel. Something to also keep in mind is that we're not going to be going super detailed on all the treads here. You, you can notice that there's this kind of repeating pattern of three, and we're not going to worry about that for the time being, because what I mainly want to show you is the technique, and in the scopes of this tutorial, we really don't have the time to go in and create all these fine details. So we're not going to worry about it for the time being. But what I want to start doing is go ahead and select this face here, and we're going to extrude it in, and we'll take the region, right click, and then G and Y to pull it in. And we want to go ahead and get rid of these two faces here and here. And then let's go ahead and what I want to do is let's select this whole top area and we're going to extrude it up. And let's hit shift tab and change this to turn on snapping. And let's change this over to the increment such that we can just move this up exactly one click. Okay. And so what I want to do now is I want to actually, um, well, let's see. Okay, actually we're going to step back one. And what I want to do is let's select these three loops and changing the snapping by hitting Control Shift Tab over to Vertex, I'm going to hit G and Y and snap right to that vertex. And then we'll select everything W, remove doubles. And then actually from, uh, yeah, there you go. And the reason that I just did that as soon as I get back to my model, is for this tread shape, what I'm going to do is go back to face mode, and I'm just going to select these three faces, and just hit E to extrude, or actually we'll exclude that one, E to extrude, region, and then we're just going to pull that out. And that will form our tread shape. And we can maybe enhance it a little bit by selecting this loop, and we'll pull it up along the z-axis a little bit, Maybe we'll take these two, pull them up just a little bit, about like that, okay? Just to give it a little extra shape. Remember, we're not worrying about a lot of the fine details in this, simply we just don't have the time. So now what I want to do is go ahead and make sure our snapping is back to the grid, Control shift tab and vertex. And then we're going to hit E to extrude, region, right click, and take it up along the z-axis, oh, increment, there we go, one click. Because this way, what this does is this line matches this line exactly. And that's what we want to ensure that we do. Because now, we can go ahead and hit tab to leave edit mode. And from the modifiers panel, if we add in a new modifier, first let's just toggle down the mirror to hide it. Let's add an array modifier. And change it from a relative offset to a constant offset and just increase the Z value. Currently it's at one and we're going to need to take this down a little. So if we hold down shift or left click and drag while holding down shift, we can get a very smooth notch. Okay. And that's pretty darn close. If we control click on it, we can go to say 0.075, maybe down to 0.074. And that's actually close enough because what we're going to do now is go ahead and click merge and that will merge those immediate vertices that line up there. However, one thing you also notice is that it's merged these ones as well, which we don't want. And we can fix this by changing the distance. Let's just change it to 0.005. Should be enough. And now you can see that it's got a much smaller margin to which it can merge vertices to. Okay. So now this is starting to get really cool. And if we increase the count here, we can see that it's going right up. And this is great, except that we want two things. One, we don't want to have to try and guess what this count is going to be. We want to be able to just set it. And, and we also want this to follow the curve of the wheel, which currently does not. 
So what we're going to do instead is we're going to hit Shift A from the side view, making sure our cursor is still centered at this origin point. Shift A, add curve, and a NURBS circle. And the reason that I'm using NURBS rather than a Bezier is that during my own testing and from prior experience, I found that for this kind of thing, the NURBS circle is more reliable. And I have no idea why. That would probably be a good question for some of the developers or someone that has a bit more experience with the actual NURBS. I just know that it's worked better. Uh, with the Bezier curve, even in 2.5, I have had more unreliable issues with the twisting that I have been unable to pinpoint exactly what's causing it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Whereas with the NURBS, so far everything has just worked. So now what I want to do is while in edit mode with everything selected, I want to rotate along the Y axis 90 degrees and let's just scale down. We can turn off our snapping, scale down to about the size of the wheel. And then we'll just left click, leave edit mode and reselect our wheel. And from um, one moment. Yeah. And now from this uh, with the wheel selected under object mode, I want to change this to a fit curve. I'm going to change that to the curve circle such that it's defining its length based on this curve. So if you were to flatten out this curve to a single line, that's how long it would be. And then I want to go in and add another modifier. I want to add a curve modifier this time. And we're again going to set the curve circle. Now you'll immediately see that it's being deformed by that, but currently it's pretty whacked. It's not working out so well. So let's go ahead and change the axis. I believe it's to the find out which one of these axes is going to work. Okay, so at this point, you can see that things are being deformed, but they're being deformed rather strangely. And this is one of the things that you kind of have, you tend to fight with a lot with curves, particularly with curve modifiers, is that things have to be absolutely exact if they're to work right. And to be perfectly honest, I don't always know what it is that causes these kinds of things, but I do know some tricks that we can use to fix it. And in this case, we can see that it's being deformed like this around the x-axis. Well, this isn't correct because we want to deform along the z-axis or the y-axis. And in this case, let's go ahead and switch it over to the z-axis. And then you'll notice if we rotate around the z-axis, it's being basically flipped around. So it's being deformed right, but it's being deformed in the opposite direction. So first, let's go ahead and um, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it around the z-axis 180 degrees and hit enter. And then you'll notice that it's way too big. And this is definitely one that honestly I have no clue why it does it. But I can tell you how to fix it, which is simply by moving it along the proper axis to bring it back down to its proper size. And in this case, we're going to move along the y-axis and we can just move it out until it's back to its original size, right about there. Maybe we'll go back just a tad bit more. And there we go. Why? I don't know. How to fix it? There we go. And in fact, actually, it's um, due to the origin point being off the cursor, I do believe, actually, now that I come to think of it, which is fine. And so what we're going to do now is I want to go ahead and scale this just the tiniest bit, because you notice that we have this gap here. And there's a couple things we can do. We can slowly scale the the curve down, but you'll notice that once it gets to immediately immediately to the end, it removes the last section. So any time that it gets to where it would merge, it deletes it. And so this is kind of a pain, but we can fix this by scaling the wheel versus the uh, the curve, and in, then thus fix it. And so we're going to just scale it until it lines up right about there. And then what we need to do is go ahead and check first and last, such that it merges those first and last vertices. And there we go. And in this case, it's not actually wanting to merge. So let's see what we can do. There we go. We'll give this right about, there we go. There it's merging. Um, and yeah, right there. Okay, and that's about as close as we're gonna get um, I think this may actually be due to a bug, but thankfully what we're going to be able to do is once we apply this, we'll be able to go right in and apply the modifier and then merge those points. So with the, the tire pretty much there, what I want to do, let's go ahead and 
add in these triangular portions here. And so what we're gonna do is let's just hit Shift D to duplicate our wheel bay or our tire because we don't wanna have to try and fight with any of the same issues that we did with this one. And so what I'll then do is just hit Tab to go into edit mode, select everything, hit X to delete the vertices, hit Shift A to add a cube, and let's first turn off the dew clipping on the mirror modifier such that we can move it out, scale it down, and we'll get right about in there. And from the side view, we can scale it in. Okay, and I wanna go ahead and with the curve modifier, let's go ahead and check it during edit mode so that we can see right where it's at. Pull that in. And then let's go ahead and delete this inside face. Which actually you can see I deleted the wrong one. So we'll delete that face there. And then we wanna go ahead and shape this just such that it fits this nice curve shape here. So we'll just select these areas, we'll extrude the regions, pull them down, do the same thing here. And just create that basic shape. Okay. And we don't need to worry about the curve because Blender will do that automatically for us. But we do need to go ahead and select these interior faces as well. Hit X and delete faces. And then the last thing we need to do is go ahead and adjust the count on the curve, on the curve circle. Or actually, we don't want to adjust the count. Instead, we want to adjust the spacing on it. So if we just increase that, and actually that's pretty much exact right there, um, just by increasing that once, and there we are. Now, one thing you also notice is that the interior edges are not intersecting the tire. And so let's go back into edit mode and we'll select these faces, pull them along the y-axis, and we can even give it a little extra just to be safe. And there we have it. That's pretty much a tire right there. What we can do now is let's go ahead and add another modifier. And in this case, we're going to add a subsurf. And we'll just toggle all these down. Let's add the subsurf modifier, subdivision surface. We'll give it, well, just one subdivision for now, optimal display. Go into edit mode, and we can go ahead and add in some perimeter loop cuts to sharpen those edges up. There we go. And from edit mode, we can also go ahead and select everything and shade smooth. Let's do the same thing with the wheel bit or the tire base. Toggle this down, toggle that down, add a subdivision surface, optimal display, add in loop cuts here. It's just a matter of adding the loop cuts real quickly. As you can see, this is immediately getting nice and sharp. Select everything, shade smooth. And there we have it. That's pretty much a tire right there. Um, I'm getting a, a few artifacts here and there, which may be due to this last primer loop that I added. So let's just go ahead and slide that up just a little bit. Maybe add in a second one right there just to sharpen it. And there we go. Okay, we're still getting a few edges. So what I'm gonna try and do is on the uh, array modifier, let's change the distance up to 0 0.0075, just add a little bit more. Oh, nope, need to go the other way. Uh, let's go 0 0.0025. And well, maybe even a little bit smaller. Okay, well, we may need to resolve some of those manually, which is not a problem. We'll just make sure. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and leave those for the time being, just because we're going to run out of time if we keep fighting that kind of stuff. Uh, one thing that I want to do is go ahead and from the side view, let's go ahead and take a look at this. And we're going to move on to the rim. And we're not going to be modeling the exact interior of the rim, partially due to myself not being a car person and not knowing exactly how the inside rim is structured, but also just because one of the things that we're doing on this tutorial is this whole series 
is modeling it, modeling everything such that we can just see it um, as the appearance. You know, we're not doing any of the interior modeling. We're not doing any of the, the fine details in here because basically making something for show. And so what I want to go ahead and do is do the rim here. But one thing that I want to point out or that you may have noticed is that this is not the same car wheel as the actual Porsche has. And this is due to the fact that I was not able to find a accurate um, reference for the exact rim or the exact tire treads of the actual Porsche. But we do, however, if we look over to the other screen, we have a good, excellent reference of the rim here. And so we can go ahead and model that. And so the way that we're going to do this is basically we're going to model one section here, or actually we'll do um, one section like this, and then we're going to duplicated it along uh, with the either spin duplicates or we could even use an array modifier to add that in. So real quick here, I'm going to go ahead and let's select our circle or our, our curve here, find it, make sure our cursor is still centered on it, which it is, and let's hit shift A, add mesh, circle, and we'll go ahead and rotate it around the Y axis 90 degrees. And then we can go and hit tab to go into edit mode and scale it down. And in this case, we're going to use the default 32 vertices. I'm going to go ahead and move it out along the X axis right to the edge of the tire. Right about there. OK. And then let's go ahead and extrude it out along the X axis or extrude it in. Extrude in one more time and leave it there. So now if we, what we need to do is we need to figure out exactly one quarter of this. So first off, let's go ahead and delete this by half. Delete the vertices. And same thing here. Delete those vertices. Because what we then want to do is we're going to go ahead and add a mirror modifier, like so. And we're going to mirror it along the y-axis and the z-axis, and not the x, in which case we also need to hit tab to go out edit mode control A and apply the rotation. So now we can go ahead and just create a perfect one quarter of this to then be mirrored across those axes. And what I want to do is go ahead and we're not going to follow this exactly because the rotation is actually off, but we're going to, we can see that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sets here, and we need to extrude two, two spindles or two spokes. And so I'm going to extrude it from this one and this one here right into the center. And so a real easy way to do this actually is we're going I'm going to hit E to extrude region, right click, and then I'm going to hit period on my keyboard to scale towards the cursor. And I want to scale on everything but the X axis, because that way it's not going to or from the cursor the other direction. This way I can just scale it right in to the spokes like that. We'll hit ta control tab to go back to vertex mode. And let's go ahead and before we go any further, let's first hit shift tab to turn on our snapping, control shift tab to switch that over to vertex. And we'll just snap each one of these to their bottom vertices like that. So at this point, oh, actually I need to step back and we want to do that on everything but the X axis. So again, you just select it, hit G and then shift X. There we go. Okay. And so now I can very easily go into vertex mode, select these interior loops and the faces in that case, which I want to go ahead and actually delete those two faces. Because that way I can just select each of these loops much easier. Like so. And then we're going to go ahead and from the uh, from front view, we're going to extrude those in, and I've got a spare vertice right there. Turn off snapping, pull it into about the depth of what I think the spoke should be. And then we can go ahead and select these edges, and let's hit Control-E, edge slide, holding down Control, 
we can snap into increments. Do the same thing there. And we'll do that on both of these. So that's then just smoothing those out. There we go. And now one other thing that I want, we need to do is we need to adjust the scale here. And so what I'm gonna do is let's add in another loop right up to the top, about like that. And then we're going to hit S or first comma on our keyboard to take it away from scaling around the cursor and then S and again, shift X to scale that down. We also need to turn off the snapping. Oops. And then we can just scale that right down and do the same thing here. Remember to scale only along the, the Y and the Z axis. And on these, I'm just scaling them up um, again along the, the Y and the Z 1.5 times just to make sure that I scale them exactly. Okay. And now let's go ahead and we want to do this interior portion. And so let's go ahead and just start connecting these vertices. First, let's select all these, hit X, delete the faces, hit Control Tab to turn off the manipulator just so it's not in the way. And we'll just select these four vertices same thing here, fill those faces. And then we need to take this down and we will need to put it uh, directly in the center. And so with our clipping on, we can just select this, extrude it down along the Z axis, right to the center. Same thing here. And one thing that you may notice is that this still is not the exact shape of the, the wheels. You know, these are not actually perfectly evenly spaced. Uh, this was partial error on my part because this actually should have been one, one block away and one block away, and then there should have been two in the middle here. So I didn't actually use the right number of vertices on my circle. But for the sake of time, we're not going to be worrying about that um, because, you know, it's okay to change some design things along the way. You know, if it's absolutely essential that everything be exactly accurate, then of course, you know, you don't want to do that. But in our case, since we're doing this as a tutorial, but also since we're doing it uh, on the fly, we can go ahead and make some creative changes as we go. And I want to go ahead and switch my snapping back on and hit Control Shift Tab to switch it back to Vertex. And we're going to go ahead and extrude these two vertices um, right click and hit G and X and just snap it to one of those such that we can then fill in these faces here. And then let's go ahead and scale these towards the cursor without snapping on everything but the X axis until it lines up there. That way we've got this same diameter there. And now we can go ahead and select each of these edges and again scaling towards the cursor except along the X axis. Let's just take that in there. I'm going to do it one more time. And you'll notice that I'm scaling around each of the, the lug bolts. So we've got an edge on each side of those. And we'll do it one last time. And then we can go ahead and start filling this in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude these two vertices, scale it to zero, except along the X fill in a face there, a face here, and then we'll go ahead and just fill in a triangle there. Since it's a flat area and it's at the center, it's okay if that's a triangle. It's not necessarily ideal, but it's not going to hurt anything. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to position my cursor by selecting this edge and hit Shift S and Cursor to Selected. And then I'm going to hit Shift A, add a circle, hit F6 to bring up the history dialog. In this case, I want to just add in, we'll just say eight vertices. 
and we'll put the radius to 0 0.01 and let's align it to the view. Okay, and now let's rotate around the y-axis 90 degrees, scale it up, let's go ahead and scale away from the cursor just to be safe, right about to the size of the lug nut, hit comma and go back to individual centers, select this half, hit X, delete vertices, since we're mirroring along the x-axis, go ahead and delete this face here, add in a loop there, add in, uh, let's see, add in a loop here, such that we can add in that face, that face, that face, and now we need, oh, we actually want to delete that loop, I was wrong, like so. Okay, because this then allows us to just, we can scale this up from the cursor if we want, or extrude in. Maybe take it in along the x-axis a little bit. And that will give us the holes for the lug nuts. And so now what I want to do is go ahead and let's just delete this vertice. And we're going to select this area this area. Actually, let's first select this vertice, hit Shift S and Cursor to Selected, and then we'll select this and this, deselect that vertice, and let's go ahead and hit uh, Shift D, scale to the Y axis, negative 1, oops, first we need to disable clipping, scale Y, negative 1, which just flips it around, and then we can rotate along the X axis, 90, negative 90 degrees, Excuse me. <coughs> and that will uh, then position that just about perfectly where we can then just select these vertices and W remove doubles. Oops, W. W merge at center. There we go. Because it wasn't quite exact. And let's go ahead and select everything, remove doubles. It would seem that we had an extra vertice in there. Okay, and at this point, I want to go ahead and these are looking a bit a bit small right now. So let's go ahead and first hitting comma on our keyboard, scale it on everything but the x-axis. And let's first make sure, uh, let's go ahead and scale it to 1.5 on each of these. There we go, just to make those a bit larger. And then let's go ahead and um, let's add a subsurf modifier to this now. I'm gonna select everything, W and Shade Smooth, Control N, and then let's go ahead and add in some perimeter loops. I'm gonna go ahead and add in four loops on each of these, just to make sure so that we have nicely evenly distributed loops. We'll go ahead and add in a loop on there to sharpen that up and let's see we need to ah, no actually that'll be good let's go ahead and add in another loop on the center of each of those we'll add another loop ah, no we're gonna leave that as is actually let's increase the division to two and maybe we need to scale each of these up a little bit. Ah, no, actually, we'll go ahead and just leave them as is because lug nuts will go in there. And so let's actually go ahead and add those lug nuts. So let's select these two, Shift S, cursor to selected. And then I want to go ahead and we're just going to fake this. And lug nuts have, if I believe it's six sides. Think about it for a second. And we're going to just go ahead and shift A, circle, F6, bring the dialog. We'll give it uh, six vertices, or, uh, a radius of, say, 0.2, and rotate around the y-axis 90 degrees. We need to be sure to turn off the clipping for the time being, such that we can, whoops, which we already messed up. So now we had to just undo a little bit to where we rotated. Now rotate around the y-axis, scale it down. And I'm going to go ahead and hit P to separate the selected, because I want to go ahead and turn off the mirror modifier on this. Since it is a circular object, it'll be a lot easier if we don't. 
And then I'm also going to go ahead and turn off the subsurf modifier as we don't need it on this. And we're going to take this in and then we will extrude it edges only out, give it the ridge of, an, of a lug nut and then pull it in. Maybe give it the tiniest bevel. Take that in, hit Shift F and Alt J to fill in those triangles. All right, I guess it's not want to do it automatically, so we'll just select them. Hit F, and there we go. Uh, maybe we will go ahead and add in a subsurf modifier to this, just for uh, consistency's sake. And what we can do is we're going to turn on optimal display, and then let's turn on, let's go and add in some edge loops. So we'll just add in edge loops there. Let's select everything and shade smooth. Control N, add in edge loop there, and there, and there, and there we go. Okay, so now with this selected, let's go ahead and in object mode, hit Shift S and cursor to selected, and tab to go into edit mode. And since we're not gonna be worrying about changing this much later on, if at all, we can just go ahead and hit Shift D rotate around the cursor, change snapping and set it to increment. We're gonna rotate it around the Y axis, 90 degrees or X axis. There we go. And that gives us our lug nuts and our wheel. And now what we just need to do is let's go ahead and select um, this interior loop and first we need to go ahead and add a little bit of an interior to this but really I'm not gonna worry about that for the time being just for sake of time so I'm gonna go ahead and add in an edge right there and we'll do the same thing here and then we'll go ahead and select these edge loops and then we want to deselect the center portion. So I can hit C to bring up my circle select and then deselect all of these vertices. And then I just want to extrude this in. And we're just going to take it in far enough that it gives it an appearance of depth. Maybe we'll add in two more loop cuts, scale them along the x-axis, and then scale towards the cursor on everything but the x-axis. Ah, nope, we're going to undo that. And we're going to leave that just like it is. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see where we're at. Um, we're going to save the wheel let's look at this just play with this for a second Yeah, let's go ahead and add in another edge loop right there. And then let's just select these two faces and pull them out along the x-axis a little bit. Maybe then we'll pull out these two edges just a tiny bit. And I'm going to undo that because that looks terrible. And even though we don't have quite enough details in here, one thing that we can do is add in a few fake details by selecting or let's add another edge loop right here and then we're going to just s smooth it out and turn on snapping grab that snap it down to the vertex right there and the y right there and this then gives us a much more circular form to which we can go ahead and extrude this oops extrude the region 
in like this, delete these faces and those faces, and then just smooth this in a little more by selecting these areas, full scale, excluding the x-axis like so. And one thing that we can do if we want to make this circular, let's add in another circle. Make sure the clipping is off, rotate around the y-axis 90 degrees, scale it down, and that then gives us a form with which to modify this along. And there we go. So now we can go ahead and just select that, hit X, delete vertices, and we'll add in uh, we'll go ahead and leave that as is. And there we go. We're just faking little details like that. And that's one of the tricks that you can use when you're working with a more complex model that you need to finish off quickly is look for little things like that, which may or may not exist on the actual model, and then just put them in. And you'll be amazed at how a lot of those little things add up very, very quickly. Okay. So we're going to pretty much leave this right here, but let's go ahead and do one thing and let's select all these and let's first add in a empty. We're going to hit shift a and add an empty object. And then we're going to select all of these objects, including the curve. So if we do a box select over this, we'll make sure we get all of it. And we're going to then parent it to the empty by hitting control P object parent, because this then allows us to move the entire wheel as one without having to worry about selecting all the different objects. And then what I'm also going to do is let's go ahead and go to select and we're going to select by grouped and children. And then I want to go ahead and hit control G to add the, this to a new group, which you will then find down here under the object buttons. Um, yeah, here we go in the group there. And if I can find the, the groups, well, that's somewhere in there. But anyway, what this then allows us to do is, ah, here we go. With a single object select, you can then see it. And we'll name this wheel. And now I can go ahead and I want to select this entire group by hitting Shift G and objects in the same group. Select the, the empty. And then I'm going to hit Alt, Alt V. To duplicate it and move it back along the y-axis right to the back and pull it out along the X about like that and by doing alt V what it does is makes a linked copy such that if I modify either one of these it then modifies all the others to do it but I can adjust the object scale I can move them, I can rotate them, but the mesh is still linked to the same object. And so then if I do that again, and we'll hit Shift D, rotate around the Z axis, 180 degrees, move it over. And I'm just roughly placing this for the time being. And we can go ahead and hit Control Shift Tab to switch this over to increment once more. And we'll just roughly place it like so. And actually, if we go ahead and select this, and let's go ahead and grab the the Y location, which you can find is uh, right here at negative 2.425. Oh, no, excuse me, it's the, actually the, yeah, no, actually I managed to get that on target. So there we go. And we can see that we actually also need to move this one in and again, this is just the rough location. We're not placing them necessarily exactly, but so now you can see it with the basic wheels and all of a sudden 
it feels like a car. Now, obviously, there's still a, a long ways to go on things, which we will finish this up in probably one or two more sections, because I know this tutorial series is getting really long, but hopefully you have enjoyed it, and hopefully you've definitely come away with some tips and tricks, but we are getting close, so I hope you hold in there for a little bit longer, and thanks for watching. Again, this is Jonathan Williamson, and I'll see you next time.